Hi folks, Dave Woodard, the man from the east here, the true solver of Forest French Treasure Hunt. I have an apology I would like to make to Forest French family and to Shiloh. Our buddy Robert McQuaid, if any of you have followed my channel, you see that Robert McQuaid is out there 180% uh, vested in protecting the Forest French family. Even though he has no affiliation with them, doesn't know any of them, only friends with him on LinkedIn. Um, but Robert McQuaid put up a, a post. I'll put it up here, maybe five seconds for each screen. There's only a couple of them. About why I sh should apologize. So my intent right here is to apologize to the Forrest Fenn family, the old family in Shiloh. Um, but Robert McQuaid's comment is right here. Okay, my first apology. I apologize to the Forrest Fenn family that when I found the actual final location that I didn't dig it up. It left room for an opportunity for fraud. So I apologize that I did not complete the mission at that time. I just thought that Forrest would keep it between himself and myself and I could dig it up in 10 months when I wasn't working law enforcement anymore. But apparently that didn't happen. So I apologize that I did not dig it up from the beginning when I found the final resting place. Secondly, I would like to apologize to Shiloh. Uh, I know that by telling Forrest Fenn the end of July 2019 and not retrieving the treasure chest, left the opportunity for you to go dig it up. So I apologize to your family that you accepted that that next level of going to re retrieve the treasure chest behind Forrest Fenn's back after he told you about it. So I, I apologize that I even opened up that situation for you to fall into. So please forgive me for that. That's all my fault. I accept full responsibility for not retrieving the chest. Now that is out of the way. I can't apologize because Shiloh made up his mind to go dig that treasure chest up and take it away from everybody. Now, I know people are upset because I say these things. And they feel like I say it without merit. Without any proof. Well, I'm going to let you know in this little story that I'm going to tell in a few minutes why I say what I say and how it came about. So that way everybody has a little bit better understanding of where I'm coming from. Because everybody is waiting and they, they probably hate me. I, I end up being the asshole here because of what happened from the bad people who made bad decisions. Okay, so I end up being the asshole, even though, even though I'm the guy that solved it and made that decision to wait less than a year to go dig it up. Okay, I know that the credibility of the Force Fen community, because there's so many people in the community that feel like they've solved this treasure hunt. I'm telling you, Absolutely, 100% that I have solved it. And I will give you the reasons in this video why. And why I am actually going to court to speak my piece. Now, if you notice, I am not going to court suing for the treasure chest like other people are doing. There's a certain way that Forrest Fenn wrote this poem that gives you title to the gold, that gives you title to the treasure chest. I did not follow those rules from the beginning. And that's why we're in the situation we're in. And people don't understand what really, really happened. So 
hopefully this little story will help you understand a little bit better on the situation that I am in as the true solver. Because there's three main important things with this treasure hunt and the ending. There is. Where is the chest and who, who has control of it right now? Right? I don't even know. I don't follow that stuff. As far as the second important thing is who actually dug up the chest. Correct? And where? That's the second important thing. The third most important thing in this whole treasure hunt ending is what the actual true solve of Forest Fens was. Okay? That is where I come in. This hunt itself, no matter what you've been told, no matter where this is heading, there is one person who actually solved the treasure hunt. And the things that Forrest Fenn said before he passed away validated that I am that man. I'm not from New Jersey. I'm not from Pennsylvania. I'm not from New York. I am from Massachusetts. I am the man from the East that Forrest Fenn talked about. So first off, I would like to say... You probably should not sell that treasure chest knowing full rights that you don't have full control over everything that's done with it yet because you don't have those three bases covered. You have two. You have two bases covered, Shiloh. Now, I hope that was a good enough apology to the family and to you that I, I left that opportunity of pretty much theft to occur. It happens everywhere. People fall into a, an opportunity and they make the wrong choice. Well, I'm letting you know, Shiloh, you made the wrong choice. It's sad, but you made it. That was your choice to do. Anyways, don't sell the chest just yet. You're, you're going to want to hang on to it because it may go differently than you're planning. The reason is I am going to give you a little story about how this came about and why we're in the situation. I've opened up in my videos to everybody about blaming Shiloh, about blaming Jack, okay? I, I should probably explain to you why I feel that way in the story of what really happened because it is throughout my many videos that are very, very, very intriguing with hints and clues about Forrest Fenn's 15 years of creating this. Now that is what you have to understand. Forrest Fenn said this is a 15 year constructed treasure hunt with multiple hints sprinkled. If you look up what sprinkled means, I'm not gonna keep putting up definitions like I do in some of my videos. And hopefully some of you just saw the last video uh, about the level of disrespect in the community where I had my Superman thing. A lot of people don't agree with that. I'm going to explain to you why it's there. So, to begin with, I went out searching, okay, back in 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. I searched for a year, uh, went out for four weeks, saved up my vacation time, and in Put it all together, went out there, did some swaps at work, so I had extra time. I had four or five weeks. I drove out there with my girlfriend. We looked around. The first place I started was Palisade Sill. Now, in my map portion, I explain why that is Palisade Sill. It specifically pinpoints Palisade in Cimarron Canyon in the first clue, the whole first stanza. Okay? I'm not going to go into all that stuff. I'm just going to explain to you the story. So, knowing... That's where it led. I searched Palisade Sill. Four weeks. And then after two weeks, I searched other areas. I searched Maverick Creek. I searched Ponderosa. I searched Clear Creek. Just like everybody else, they went to different areas. But when you realize what the poem tells you, it tells you Palisade Sill. So I searched. Went again the next year after I had no luck. 
had my girlfriend with me. With her anxiety, we, we stick together. I, I can't really get too far from her. And, and this is where it gets into personal stuff that I don't really want to get into to tell everybody my story about my girlfriend's um, health things going on and my girlfriend's anxiety to where I can't, I can't go up into the woods a half a mile away from her because of her anxiety, but I stand by her. So we searched again, same thing, did another trip for three or four weeks and didn't find anything. I finally thought, you know, 2017, I need to do a trip by myself. I need to just go out there and cruise Palisade Sill and look for that treasure or look for the blaze that's hidden somewhere in that in Palisade Sill. I just knew I had to do it by myself. So I planned a trip, five days, went out to Palisade Sill or went out to New Mexico, spent five days there, one day traveling, the next three days searching, and one day traveling back home. So that was my five days. My Fitbit told me I did 129 floors in four hours. I cruised up and down everywhere in Palisade Cell. And I wasn't getting any anywhere that I didn't get before. So I realized I need to do this different. I crossed the canyon onto the opposite side, which my girlfriend told me that she told me two years earlier, which I should have listened to. But I crossed the canyon to try something different because I was under Palisade Cell and on that whole side across the river, thinking your effort will be worth the cold. Well, that doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean crossing water. What? So what I did, I searched the other area where the power lines are. Some people think those are the heavy loads in Cimarron Canyon. They are not. I, I've explained what heavy loads are in order of the map. If you watch my map video, you will understand what heavy loads are. So I searched across from Palisade Hill on that other opposite hill. I searched half a day cruising everywhere, up and down and over. I had pictures of different markings on trees I thought were blazes. I came down a steep hill into a small little trench, went up onto the other side. And when I found that fire pit, it came to me. This is the hidden blaze that Forrest Fenn was talking about. This is the actual blaze. It has to be. This is what's hidden from everybody down below. So I scoured. I was up there by myself. I was on my own trip. Uh, nobody else there. Uh, I took that chance of going in the woods. But so I, after I found the blaze, I searched that area. 30 feet away, I found a, a rock structure that really looked like, and you see it in my other videos, in, in that video with the with the poem I just described about um, the disrespect in the Forest Fen community. That is the actual nook. If there is something written down about Forest Fen saying that there's a nook in the area of where the treasure chest is, that is the picture of that nook. Those two rocks that look perfectly aligned, that are on top of another rock that look like a chest would fit right inside, that is the nook. That was brought up and for some reason is getting all blown out of proportion somewhere else. That's the actual nook picture that I took and I sent it to Forrest Fenn with a timestamp, with the dates and with where it was located. Okay, so that right there, that was November 1st, 2017. December 2017 is when Forrest Fenn came out. With I have a gut feeling that someone is going to find the treasure by the end of next year. So I knew. I'm like, this is it. The search season's been over for three months. But November 1st, I sent him that picture. And he knew that somebody was on the blaze. He knew that somebody was right there. Right there at the poem where they're supposed to be. In sequence. So. I sent him the picture. I kept looking, I searched around, found the nook, found a sitting rock that's out of that ridge. And 
actually, I searched around. There's a there's a little trench right next to it, and you can see it in the pictures. There's a little trench next to the blaze. Okay, that trench is the actual chase that Forrest Penn named the thrill of the chase because the front cover of the first book is the thrill of that chase. That's what he's specifically talking about. When he's talking about a chase, he's talking about that trench that leads right up, right next to the fire pit. That is the chase that he used to go up when he was a kid and get up to his secret spot, his secret place that was away from everybody else, that nobody knew he was there, but he was still close enough. So, I searched that area. I ended up back down to the parking lot. I tried to come back up, and I couldn't get up the steep hill. I, I, It took me 15 minutes. It literally took me 15 minutes to figure out how to get back up to that, that spot, that ridge, from just out beyond the parking lot. And if you go deep in there without going up the path that leads up to the power lines, you go in deep, there is a hidden trench right there that leads up to that fire pit, which is the actual true blaze. Okay, folks? This is going out to the folks there. I know the Forrest Fan family and, and the olds don't really care about all of my situation and my trip that I, I took out there that made me find these things. But the rest of the world needs to know why I say what I say. So, it took me 15 minutes. I found that little trench that led up to the fire pit. So, I finished looking up there for the next day and a half. And I was like, all right, I got to go home. I took my trip back home. I knew after the next month, Forrest Fenn said, I have a gut feeling the treasure is going to be found by the end of next summer. That validated right there to me because I had already solved the map home to, to find where you need to search. Okay, that was all there. So the next summer, I asked my son, my buddy, and my girlfriend to go on a trip to finish this out. I said, all we need to do is figure out if you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down. Your quest to cease. But carry scant with marvel gaze. Just take the chest and go in peace. This four lines there. Okay? There's a whole bunch of lines there that you have to still figure out. It's not so simple where you find the blaze and you look quickly down and the treasure chest is there. He doesn't say that. He said your quest to cease. So many people will read a line and then interpret and they won't let it go on how it's supposed to be, how it's really supposed to be used. Okay, this is, this is what we run into. But when you find that actual blaze, the fire pit up on the ridge, you go back to the front of the ridge. And this is why, folks, this is why it took me two years. Yes, two years to figure out what the rest of the poem meant up until take the chest and go in peace. You're at the blaze. You look quickly down. Right next to you, six feet, is the trench that leads up. I thought some of the other meanings in the poem, the stone cold, was it was under some rocks right down at the bottom of the ravine because I had checked everywhere around the fire pit. It was not there. So the look quickly down had to either be into the ravine, the steep, steep hill in the front, or look quickly down the canyon, which is it, what I did Two years later, almost two years later, I thought maybe look quickly down because he says take it in the canyon down. So I thought it was a direction. But I don't want to get too out, too far off of base of what I'm, where I'm headed with this. I want to explain the actual story. So you find the blaze, you look quickly down. It ended up being the steep hill in the front. That's the quickly down. That's the steepest area. You can't climb down there. You either have to go down the ravine or way around and come down behind the picnic area, behind the uh, outhouse there, or go up that way. But you have to bear right. So look quickly down is a steep hill in the front. Now, the way the forest writes the poem, I explain that in my other videos that I have the whole poem and, and the map portion in. So I don't need to, to go over that. 
I'll just say it, say it the way it is. The look quickly down is a steep hill in the front. You end up back down where you started. Okay? Then you cross the parking lot. That's the Terry scan. The Marvel gaze is, is Palisade still right in front of you. And then four says, just take the chest and go in peace. So if you think that you're going to find the blaze in a $3 million hunt and look quickly down, take the chest and go in peace. That's not how the poem works. One person solved the poem. So maybe it's time to just basically try to forget what you think fits in the poem and, and actually just try to understand it and, and watch the way it flows together. Okay. Because that word cease, it lines up with a T.S. Eliot quote. And that's in my, my video also. Basically what he says is when you're done searching, you end up back where you started. And that word connecting together inside the poem, the same time, from the top of the ridge, you will end up back where you started. Because look quickly down your quest to cease. That is it. That's that magic word that brings you, like T.S. Eliot said it for Forrest Fenn, brings you back down where you started. Okay? That is beautiful. And, and that is that is some of the magic in Forrest Fenn's treasure hunt here that I'm trying to get across to people. And because it's spread out in so many videos, they miss it. They don't see it or they don't understand it. So that quest to cease, that part in the actual poem tells you you're going you're gonna to end up back where you started. You go back down and then it says, but carry scan. So the but, look quickly down, your quest to cease. But that is that is a continuation of the same sentence, but somewhere else. So that's what he said. Every word is critical. Every, I believe every word is critical. The way he says it, the way he puts it together. So you're going to end up back down where you started. You're going to tarry scant across that one car parking lot with Marvel gaze. Palisade Sill was his Marvel gaze. Just take the chest and go in peace. The cross is right there 12 feet in after the parking lot. And I have other things that line this up for that also in the stories that I'm going to bring in. When I bring all my all my clues and hints and all of my proof on how this whole poem actually works at Palisade Sill. So now we're at the treasure chest. The location. Okay. My, my vacation I took out there with my son, my girlfriend, and my friend. I left that summer, 2018. I was frustrated from the whole trip. So I ended up getting a message to Forrest a little bit later that month, in July, early July. But when we left the canyon, Cimarron Canyon, there were fires that started in Cimarron Canyon. Okay? That whole canyon was shut down. Everybody was evacuated. Nobody was in there for, I don't even know how long, a week or whatever it was, till the fires burned down. Forrest Fenn, before the end of summer, if everybody remembers, in 2018, before the end of summer, said, after I had sent him that message and the fires, he said, my gut feeling of someone finding the treasure chest is wavering. So he knew either there was a fire in Cimarron that was going to shut everybody down, or it's a message I sent him. Either way, I had sent a message before he made that statement. So he knew that I had stopped searching that summer because of the vacation that I took was not not at all what I expected to finish the, the treasure hunt. And I told him, Forrest, you beat me. I, I, I think I'm, I'm done. That's it. So that was 2018. Forrest said his thoughts are wavering. Everybody didn't know why. Everybody didn't understand. Well, that is why. That is why Forrest Fenn said that. That's why he said the gut feeling. After that, I thought on it for another year. It it weighed on me, and I I did something crazy. I believe this was the date, 2019, January. I had a bright idea. Um, after my searching and after everything else, like I said, it took two years. But one of the things I thought, 
it was under the rocks in the trench that leads up. Okay, that's this is when I went and searched for that. I got it in my head. It was the middle of winter. I went out there, crazy as it is. Um, flew out, got a car, went to uh, St. James Hotel. There was some snow on the ground. There was some not snow on the ground in certain areas, but it was tricky to get up there. When I parked, I got my parking pass. I paid for it. Middle of winter, because that's the kind of guy I am. I saw a ranger, and I said, hey, I'm going to go hiking today. And he said, well, be careful. There's five mountain lions that are hanging out together, cruising the canyon. And I thought, okay, this is probably not a good idea. But I still did it. I had to get it out of my system of what I thought. The look quickly down was into the trench, and it was down in a pile of rocks at the base. It didn't happen. I didn't. It was not there. I was getting nothing with my metal detector. Nothing. And this is before I knew about the cross. So that trip, out of the way. That was one thing gone. Crazy? Yes. I survived it? Yes. Me, one buck knife, and five mountain lions probably wouldn't have went well. But it happens. Shit happens. Because I, I was that obsessed with knowing that I'm at the blaze. And I had to figure it out. So that passed by. The next summer, I told my girlfriend, she knew it was coming. I said, I need to go back out there one more time. I believe that the look quickly down is look down the canyon to find, like, your effort will be worth the cold, a cold hard stare. So you had to sit on that sitting rock and stare down the canyon. That's what I thought. So I told my girlfriend, we're going back out. She said, okay, it's another trip for you, not for me. Okay. She's good like that. We went out there. I dragged her up to that fire pit and that ridge that you can have that beautiful view of Palisade Cell and down the canyon. And I dragged her up there for two or three days. We had an issue with the camper on the way out there. Lost the tire, gutted the whole sink, everything pulled out. I, I pretty much junked the camper. And I bought my new one. That was that trip. We Every trip we have unlucky crap that happens, but we have a great trip. So we're looking. We're looking out down the canyon for a day, sitting there trying to see something. I got a spotting scope. I got binoculars. We sat up there, looked around. I finally went across to see if I could find something there. But nothing. Again, the end of that whole trip, I had like less than a, maybe a day left. Went back down to the truck, frustrated again, and thinking, all right, I'm I'm done. Forrest Fenn beat me again. It's Maybe it's not the right place. I'm sitting in the vehicle in front of the cross that says Kent and Esther. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, and I'm looking. And I was frustrated. I was angry. I knew I was done. I, I would have had to be done. I couldn't keep doing a trip to look for one thing. Thinking about it, looking at the cross, it came to me. Forrest Fenn said, if you don't have the first clue nailed down, which is Palisade Sill, that's directly where you're going to go. That's directly where I went for three years. And I parked in front of that cross. So Forrest Fenn saying, if you don't have the first clue nailed down, which is clue number one, the whole stanza, pinpointing Palisade, you drive right to that cross. You might as well stay home and play canasta. Okay? So that Kent and Esther, when you realize, and this is how it is in Force Fen stories, this is how I knew that it was solved because Force Fen talked about a cross that was so important to him. So I finally realized, only knowing that I had the map right and knowing that I had the pinpointed search area right, and then I finally had the blaze right. What is the connection between everything? Well, right in the middle of the whole Palisade Sill, next to the parking lot, is that cross with Kent and Esther. And that cross, when I realized Ken and Esther is Ken Esther, you might as well stay home and play Canasta. Ken Esther. I mean, how much closer can you get to know that that is the actual cross? So I had to figure, okay... I don't know who Kent and Esther are. Is this really it? This is Canasta, as far as I'm concerned. So I have my books, and I look in them. 
and I see J.D. Solinger. J.D. Solinger is a canasta fiend. So if you start looking up terms of canasta, you run into a really crappy hand. The worst hand you can get in canasta is called as dead as canasta. Kenton Esther, canasta, if you join them together, like Force Fenn talked about in his book, My War for Me, okay, the first book, he talked about being in the plane, being loopy, and he, the thought came to him about melding the thoughts together. And it didn't come back into his mind until the grave marker came back into his life years later. Okay, this is the grave marker that he's talking about. How to incorporate using the actual grave marker and the names, which I had no idea about. So, those names, Kent and Esther. No idea, I just solved it with Canasta. As dead as Canasta, two people can keep a secret if one of them is dead. The two people are Kent and Esther. And if those two people are joined together... They can keep a secret because if one of them is dead, they're both dead. They're both going to keep the secret. That's how the secret is kept. That was the secret that Forrest Fenn said, I can keep my secret where? In his poem. The two people are keeping an eye on his secret. Okay? That, that is what the cross importance is in this whole, in this whole solve that Forrest Fenn created and built. Okay? Now, that right there. That sealed the deal for me. I was like, oh my God, I know where it is. I know where the actual treasure chest is. I have an injury. Actually, I had that injury. I couldn't dig. So, and then being law enforcement, knowing I'd get, I could get in really big trouble and arrested with the law enforcement background is not going to be a good thing, especially if I don't get the treasure chest out there and get caught digging. So my decision to wait was... Lawful, it was my choice. So, either way, that's all I knew when I actually solved Forrest Fenn's treasure hunt. Okay, folks? Nothing else with Kent and Esther. I didn't know. So, I took, I took that information. I went home. I sat on it. I tried to dig a little bit. Like, I, I showed some people some pictures in a previous video. But, like I said, I... I went in at night. My girlfriend sat on the road and across the street in the, in the car at night while I was trying to do what Forrest Fenn wanted us to do. And in my stories, in my maps, in my solve, you will see why I explain each thing that he told us to do and how it all works out. So that map that I just did recently, that one explains it perfectly. The nine clues he tells you. When I have the nine clues broken down, that video will tell you how Forrest Fenn told you to get the treasure chest. My decision to wait was my decision between Forrest Fenn and I. So, I decided, okay, I know this is it. Nail down. There's a nail in the cross bent down. You, if you don't have the first clue nailed down, stay home and play Canasta. Canasta right there. It's that simple, folks. That was how easy it was. It was set up so an 80-year-old man could find that treasure chest. Okay, now I already know I'm the guy. I've solved it. So I end up mailing through the mail this picture. I'll put up, because I put it up before, this picture of the little story of surviving myself. And if you read that or watch my other videos, surviving myself story exactly explains how to go in at night when it's dark with no moon when Forrest says, if it wasn't too cold, I would go in down to the cemetery at night. Okay, this is all, that little story, I had to put that in there. I know that story. And the little, with Forrest Fenn sitting on the grave marker, and there's that whole graveyard, but there's one little cross, folks. That's the cross that is so important in the whole story that he's talking about. How this surviving myself lines up to going into the cemetery one block north the block is the parking lot north is exactly the direction you are heading when you leave the fire pit 
directly north. We'll head down the steep hill, right down across the parking lot to the actual cross. That right there, surviving myself with the picture of the cross and the canopy of stars is what I sent for Sven. So he knew, he absolutely knew, a guy from the East solved it. Using the poem, using the clues and hints, he solved the actual poem. But I never sent for Sven whether I dug it up or not. So that right there, folks, tells you that Forrest Van knew. The guy from the East solved it. Okay? That's a year later he came out with that quote. And that's what I'm going to explain to you. How this all came about. And it was not... It was not on purpose by me. I had that right to wait. So... Forrest Van gets the picture of the cross in the graveyard, in the canopy of stars, the story, my girlfriend and I, the little canasta saying, and I told him in a letter, I said, I have all this that I mailed to him. I said, good, good one, Forrest. Um, I expected a response, but Forrest didn't want to give me that response. He wanted to know that I actually dug it up and I, I played that game with him. Okay. Because Forrest played games with us for 10 or eight years. It was just my way of letting him know that I actually solved it. But I'm taking a stance of waiting right now. I'm not telling you I found it. I'm not telling you I didn't. So from July of 2019, the end of July to the beginning of August when Forrest received that, four days later, as I've stated in other videos, a vlogger came out with Forrest Van Gets Mail. I'm not going to bring their name up. They will be brought into court if it comes down to it, though. But I don't want it to come down to it. So, I ended up seeing this Force Fen Gets Mail, and I watched it. About 28 minutes into the video, the lady on the video got really excited and said, okay, somebody got really, 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 really close to the treasure chest. We don't know who it is. Is it the same guy last year who said he was all done searching? Now, when I watched that video, I showed my girlfriend. I showed two or three people at work. 2019 August some point. That's when this video came out. There's no way that they would know that there was a closest searcher who gave up the year before. Okay? And that's what I sent for us in that letter when I was so frustrated about my trip. Now, how do they know that someone is real close? And how do they know there's a searcher that said he gave up searching last year? Okay? Because out of the blue, I sent that to Forrest that I had found the cross. And four days later, that video comes out. So for a timeline, for people to understand exactly what happened, this is your timeline to follow, to understand anything and any questions of why and how what came out over the whole timeline. This is your chance to understand how that fits in. Okay? So Forrest Fenn understands. A guy from the East solved it. He tells a certain vlogger or YouTuber, or whatever you want to call them, I'm not into this that much. I just do it and that's it. But the tuber came out with that video. I tried to contact that tuber and didn't want anything to do with me. So I backed off. I'm like, okay. They don't put any videos out anymore. Now, whether they were gag ordered some point during that time to the next year, they were gag ordered. They were paid off. I don't know. I'm not going to assume anything. That remains to be seen, depending on how this whole thing goes. They are somebody who's going to get called in for information at some point if it gets to that. That's proof on my side. Okay? Now, August Force Fen knows someone solved it. He's not telling me yet. He tells somebody else in an email, I'm waiting for that one guy's name or an interview or something. He was waiting for one guy that he was waiting to hear from. Now, apparently Forrest Van wrote a remembrance letter, correct? I didn't know if it was Shiloh that wrote it. I didn't know who wrote it. But Forrest, knowing that the actual treasure chest was found, but not no response yet, maybe in his mind, he said, you know what? Even though the guy hasn't come forward yet, I should write a remembrance letter 
that goes out to him. So when he does come forward with the treasure chest, or if he does, he may never do it. But if he comes forward with it, I have the remembrance letter for this guy from the East that solved it. Okay? That's my take on it right now until I get to talk to someone who's going to tell me the truth on that side of the family over there. So, Forrest Fenn writes a remembrance letter. A lot of this stuff, I don't know. I don't even think I've seen the remembrance letter, folks. So, I don't know. I don't know. I guess Jack's name got put into it. Uh, this is stuff I've asked the community to, to communicate with me and help me so that we can work together. And whoever helped me, we would be like, hey, you're going to be in the movie, man. You're going to be in the miniseries. Because people understanding the actual things that happened and in order how they actually happened and how I got fucked over and the rest of the community got fucked over, that's what we're going to learn. Like from Force Van on right now, writing the remembrance letter. I didn't know anything about it. I left the community. I wasn't watching any videos. I knew where the solve was. I knew I, I had it safe. And to be really extra safe, in I think it was August. In August, September, I asked my friends that I knew in, in New Mexico to take the cross and just hold it for me until the next year when I came back out. Because it was winter time, anyways, it really didn't matter. I didn't believe someone would find the spot. But I asked them to take the cross. So they took it for me. Not wanting to, but they did. As friends, they held on to the cross. Okay? I said, I'll take full responsibility for it. So that cross that Forrest Fenn put there, they're holding for me. Now, everything went smooth. Didn't hear anything until June. Now, June is my retirement date, June 25th. So, I'm ready to retire. June 6th, everybody gets the news. Forrest Fan says the treasure's been found. I'm thinking, why? How, how could this be found? I don't understand. The treasure chest was sitting at Palisade Sill, probably four feet down, because that's what Forrest Fan said in his stories. The treasure chest is sitting there safe with no cross. Somebody would actually have to figure out exactly what I did and then make it down across the parking lot and see the ring of rocks that was still there. So it was not totally impossible. But for somebody to do exactly that without the cross there, just the ring of rocks, that it's so highly doubtful. That's why I only had them remove the cross. And I would have put it back when I came back. So... Somebody came forward with the treasure chest. Okay, so in my mind, I figured the friends I trusted didn't keep the information quiet. And now the solve is out there. They had a family member do it or they mentioned it to other people camping or whatever. I don't know. That's what I thought. So I was kind of upset. I'm like, I can't say anything about the treasure chest. But... Being announced, I ended up emailing Forrest Fenn, asking him, like, hey, what's going on here, Forrest? I sent you the information about the treasure chest and where it was hidden, but now all of a sudden it's found. How could it be found with no cross there? So, I didn't get any response. It was Forrest probably wasn't looking at, at his emails because they were all excited that Forrest Fenn got a picture of the treasure chest. Sitting at Palisade Sill, folks. That's where that timestamp. I will. I have guaranteed everything else. I, I, I'm not going to guarantee it. I, I'm just going to tell you straight up. That picture. That's my evidence that it was at Palisade Sill because the pictures I have when I covered that area with all kinds of sticks and all the natural mulch that was out there. When I left after the little bit of digging I did, I'm like this. I took a picture of the whole area. Snapshot, all covered with, with sticks and mulch. So when I heard the treasure chest was dug up, I, I needed to do my investigation. So I had my friends go over to the, where the cross was and take pictures. Now, the picture I received, there were dig marks there. 
Okay? Now, I have those pictures of 2000, June 2020. I have those pictures of where the cross was that I had spread out all the mulch. Nothing was disturbed. But there were dig marks. There were big circles of dirt. So what does that tell you? Somebody was digging at the cross where the cross wasn't. Okay, so I thought it was my friends. Because he seemed like he was embarrassed to take a full picture of it. I have just in half of the picture at the bottom. You can see the dig marks in the areas though. Whoever dug just didn't give a shit about putting everything back the way it was supposed to be. Because they're, they're doing something illegal. So, I have pictures... Mulch, I have pictures unmulched, 2019, 2020. So sometime in between that, somebody was digging in Cimarron Canyon at Palisade Sill where the cross was. Okay, I've got the proof of that. That's proof right there. So my friends send me the picture. I move on to the next step. I think it's them. I ask them. They said no. So, but I didn't know anybody else. I trust Forrest Ben. To not give out the information. I trusted my friends with the cross. But then I started to think. You know. Forrest Fenn told. This other vlogger. About. Somebody being real close. So he. Is letting the cat out of the bag. A month after. I've, I've found the cross. So Forrest Fenn. I was like okay. He didn't keep his. He didn't keep that part of the secret. But now who he has to trust is Shiloh. Shiloh's the next one in line. Shiloh's the one helping him. Shiloh is the one that's taking control of everything. The forest passes. So now Shiloh, Shiloh's the only one, supposedly now, besides Forrest Fenn, that knows where the treasure chest is. So between those 10 months, Shiloh went and dug it up. Okay? I'm standing by that 100%. He's the only one who would have fully known completely that Forrest Fenn would have told him where it was. So, we get to June when he, Forrest Fenn receives the picture. And they're going to tell you different stories to make this up, how it, how it works out for them. But I'm going to tell you how Forrest Fenn saw it. I don't believe that Forrest Fenn, Forrest Fenn was sending Dale Neitzel emails about shutting down the treasure chest hunt. In December, correct? Okay. So that scared Shiloh. Like, oh my God, Forrest Fenn's going to announce that the treasure chest has been taken. And it's not. The guy hasn't got it yet. Because I got it. So Forrest Fenn talks to Dale. But as far as I know, because people won't, my my other fellow Fenn community will not answer questions or discuss it with me. I think that um, Forrest Fenn's family talked Forrest Fenn out of shutting down the hunt. If if I'm wrong, please let me know. But that's how I, I remember hearing it, okay? I don't know actual facts in that in that realm of it. But if it's so, for, why would Forrest Fenn's family tell him to not, which would be Shiloh, not end the hunt when they wanted him to end the hunt for eight years? Make sense? Okay, so Forrest Fenn... Sent Dale the, the email for that. And then he also probably sent him the email about he's waiting for that one guy to, to talk to him. So, Forrest Fenn receives the picture, June 6th, supposedly, of the treasure chest. The one that we've all seen. The only one we've ever seen. That's it. That's all you're going to see. Because they're not going to produce anything else. Because it's going to give away incriminating evidence. Okay? So that little picture. That's my evidence of a timestamp and date and place where that treasure chest was retrieved. And I can tell you right now, it's not June 6th. And it's not in Wyoming. It's at Palisade Sill. I will... I'm doing this because I, I am that sure. So... Forrest Fenn receives the picture and goes, the guy finally went and got the treasure chest. Or he got it and he's finally letting me know. Forrest Fenn goes to his announcement people. Hey, the treasure chest has been found. It's been found by a man from back east. 
Is that Jack? No, not yet. Been found from a guy from back east who wants to remain anonymous because I, I didn't contact Forrest. And, and I was going to the next month, but I didn't contact Forrest for that, that 10 months. So Forrest thinks, I just want to remain anonymous. I'm back east. I just sent him a picture. But Forrest wants to give me credit. So he says, the guy from back east, it was found in the lush vegetation of the Rocky Mountains under a canopy of stars. Right? Okay. So, the lush vegetation is the grass around the cross that I've had the picture of. Under a canopy of stars is two meanings, folks. It's the meaning of the picture I sent him. And I knew that. I knew that that picture. I didn't take it as though uh, the canopy of stars was important. But where the cross was, when you realize the way the force has these different silly connections, he said it was found under a canopy of size. And I had the little cross marked and circled. So he knew that I had that found that little cross. The cross that was so important to him in Vietnam. So Forrest Ben gave me credit. Okay? Now Shiloh, knowing full well, oh shit. Forrest Van is saying it's the guy from back east. Now the guy from back east knows he's the guy from back east. And knows he's the guy that Forrest Van thinks has the treasure chest. But the guy doesn't have the treasure chest, does he? No. Somebody else grabbed the treasure chest. So, now we run into the dilemma where Jack shows up as Shiloh's front man. Because Shiloh can't show up with the thing. He's got to find somebody who's literally going to be, I'm sorry, Jack, dumb enough to accept that fraud and take that position right up in front with your face. Your face, Jack. Your face going, I solved the treasure hunt by walking through the woods for 25 days. I solved it. I didn't solve the poem. I'm sorry. So, and God rest for us, Ben. I, I tell you, and I've said it in my other videos, I can't imagine how much Forrest Ben hurt when he knew what really happened. Okay? Because now, Jack comes forward. No solve. Forrest Ben has 15 years of his heart and soul into this treasure hunt. And he's ready to give it to somebody who's earned it. Okay? But Jack comes forward. Hi, Forrest. I have the treasure chest. Well, let's discuss how you found it. So what were all the clues that brought you to that final resting place where the, where the cross was? And Jack has nothing for him. Jack has nothing. The folks, Forrest had to go along with it because where did it come from? Where did the chest come from if Jack says he found it in the middle of the woods? And I feel bad again. And I apologize to everybody out there that it, that it went this way. Because it shouldn't have. And it's not my actual fault that it went this way. I was the guy that found the resting spot and let Forrest Fenn know. And then whatever happened from there is all up to Shiloh to answer right now. But as far as... Jack coming forward to Forrest Fenn saying, I have the treasure chest. And Forrest Fenn going, you have no idea of anything. And he probably lied to him or didn't even tell him he knew where it was. So who knows? I don't know. But I'm telling you folks right now, this story right here that I give you is absolutely 100% the actual facts of what really went down on my side. So guessing what happened with Forrest Fenn, not even wanting to acknowledge Jack as the finder. Shiloh had to acknowledge Jack after Forrest Fenn passed away. And then he said, I, I guarantee this 100%. So it dispels any conspiratorial theories, which is me coming forward. So Shiloh, that I have against you right there. You tried to shut this down from the actual true location where you took it from. Now, 
when I realized Jack came forward and they, and then they have to go, shit, we're going to have to say it's in New Mexico. This guy's going to know. We have to come up with somewhere else. So they came up with Wyoming. They didn't want to give the Salvo, but my videos kept pushing them and kept pushing them. But when, when they announced Wyoming and they had Forrest Fenn because Forrest Fenn now knows Jack is a front man. His own flesh and blood took the treasure chest. Now his own flesh and blood, he has to cover his ass. So Forrest Fenn has to, has to literally say something on a document that he does not want to say. He does not want to lie. He hasn't lied to any of us the whole way through. And now all of a sudden he's got to cover his own family member. Which I, I can only imagine Forrest Fenn's dismay and, and how upset he must have been. But I'm, I'm not even going to get into that. That's between the family. So Forrest Fenn has to cover Shiloh's ass. Forrest Fenn writes in the Wyoming document. If you look at my three Wyoming videos, we'll explain... Why Forrest had that specific line put into that document. Okay? Check my Wyoming ones out. It explains it. It explains Palisade Sill was emplaced 40 million, million years ago, or whatever it was. It says it right on the Palisade Sill. There was a, a huge set of rocks that came down in a glacier from wherever. They came down from the north. This. So these videos explain why Forrest Fenn wrote the way that he did in that specific line. All the rest of the crap in that whole document was Shiloh just trying to say, oh, at 27 minutes and 36 seconds, uh, Forrest Fenn said this about if you found the treasure, you own it. Whatever. He's trying to make throughout the whole document that was already done two months earlier, but now all of a sudden it's got to come out as proof that it was in Wyoming. Why did they have to prove it so much before Forrest Fenn passed away? Why? Couldn't Forrest Fenn go online? Forrest Fenn didn't want to lie to everybody's face and say it. That's why he agreed to do this document that let Shiloh go to the court. Because Shiloh, you said, or somebody said, Forrest Fenn was, was not even well enough at the court time to go to court for that document. He didn't want anything to do with it. You can, I can tell you that right now. So Forrest Fenn avoids the document but puts that little one quote. I hid the chest in the Rocky Mountains of Wyoming. All right? That's how he said it. In the Rocky Mountains of Wyoming. And I said that in my video. If you have a piece of cake, the cake's over here. I have a piece of cake. It's the Rocky Mountains of Wyoming. It's down in New Mexico, embedded at Talisade Cell. He can get away in his mind going, you know what? I'll, I'll agree to say that it was in Wyoming. Because of the reasons behind it. So, now you have me sending emails to Forrest Fenn asking. Forrest Fenn, these emails are going to be on record at the court as evidence. I'm asking Forrest Fenn, please reconsider Wyoming. It's your chest. I understand it's your chest. You can do whatever you want. I don't understand you, why you're saying Wyoming. I don't understand why it's you're not admitting what like what really happened. Um, and this guy Jack has has come forward. I don't I don't I was lost on why Forrest Fenn would have told somebody where the chest was unless he trusted one person. So I was really confused. By July 25th, I received an email that these guys think is evidence towards them, which is fine. I'm very happy with it because Forrest Fenn's emails are deleted, right? I have an email, lucky me, that is directly from Forrest Fenn. Forrest Fenn's email, not Forrest Fenn. Okay, that's where the difference is. This email is directly from Forrest Fenn's email. Who took over the email account? Who deleted the, all of Forrest Fenn's email account? That's what I'd like to know. So I have this lucky little email that says, Dave, Wyoming response. The treasure was found in Wyoming. It had nothing to do with you. F. Just like Forrest does for everybody. But Forrest Fenn, in December or November, 
was saying, I re I cannot answer any more emails. I can't go through this anymore. I can't, I can't, it's too much. There's too many emails that come in. Okay, so 43 days before Forrest Ben passes away in his life. 43 days, he comes on an email and responds to me. Like, who the hell am I? Why is he responding? It had nothing to do with you. Did he put 800 emails out that day? Has he been, was he going on his emails every day up until he passed away to just dispel all the people that were upset? No, he was not. I guarantee if you look at that day's email, July 25, 2020, you will see one email that went out from Forrest Fenn's email account just to squash me from pursuing knowing that I'm the guy. So I get that email. I go, okay, I'll back off. And that's what they wanted. They wanted me to back off. But they still have Jack, that, that's the front man, that they have at the cover because they don't, they put his face up there. So he's the guy that they have to go, woo, he's the guy. Jack, let's do interviews. Uh, Jack can't do interviews because he doesn't know what to answer. He doesn't know anything about the solve. He doesn't know anything about Wyoming and wandering through the woods for 25 days. I can tell you that. Honestly, 100%. Again, it's... This is all so fabricated. And people know that Jack, okay, the people that are out there that understand that Jack is not the guy. Jack is not the solver. Jack, they called him the finder to place him there to protect Shiloh old. Okay? That's what happened. I can, I, I'm doing this because I absolutely know. So, now I back off. I go away for almost a year and I want, I just kind of let it go. I don't, I, a lot of the things happen. I don't know what it is, but then the more I kept thinking about it, I'm like, I took my books out. Finally, like, what was it last year? Last year. And that's when the video started. I did a few videos at the beginning of the year when I started learning more and more. I tried to put out the information. That I'm the real solver. Just solving it by Kenton Esther and Canasta. Okay, that was brilliant. But I needed to I need to satisfy my my own mind, my own head, that okay, I need to validate this, that this is the actual real solve. So I need I need to go back into the books and look. And I realized last fall, one of my videos was out about the homely girl. Because I didn't know who the homely girl was. I didn't know who Ke Kent and Esther were. I finally figured it out that the homely girl was Aunt Esther. So I started investigating into the books how Aunt Esther fit. And where all the clues and hints and connections to pull Aunt Esther. So that video is pretty interesting. I have some things on on uh, Sanford and Son. Some clippings of how... How many times Fred Sanford called her ugly, um, picked on her, unbelievable. But the way he did it, it was funny. Everybody laughed. Everybody loves the show. So that's the Aunt Esther. But secretly, there's another Aunt Esther that I'm going to bring in into court. And this is huge. This is, this is what connects some of the other stories that you will see. I can't give this info out yet. This actual book that I found with Aunt Esther actually has so many connections to the thrill of the chase. You would think that Forrest Fenn read this and said, I'm making a book and I'm using a lot of these hints and I'm pulling a lot of the things out. So I, that, that right there, that book is, is like my validation that this is the actual poem outside of the actual poem. Being the actual poem. So, Aunt Esther, I figured that out. I gave everybody the information. And next I had to figure out, within another month, I was working on Kent, who uh, who Kent was. And, uh, and finally, looking through the stories, I saw looking for Lewis and Clark. And I realized, okay, 
I think I got it. Looking for Lewis and Clark was really looking for Lois and Clark. It hit me that that Clark is Superman. Now, the superhero that's in there, I have my Superman videos. I have my superhero videos. It's all in the solve. This poem was literally solved without that. Everything that I found after the fact of the treasure chest being found was more and more and more validation that this is the actual true solve. And there are so many, this is 15 years, like I said, folks, not 15 minutes and not 15 days, if that's the most they're going to give you up in Wyoming. Because I can tell you, they do not have a solve that is solid up there. They have one line, one line, one line, like everybody was trying to do in the beginning. Watch my video about the actual poem. You will understand how it, how it works out and how it is how it is the actual poem. I know that once this gets into the mainstream media and people people really see that this is the actual true solve and, and the people that want to take the time and watch the videos and go and, and if you know, especially if you know the stories and know the books, you will be like, wow, that's that's actually really cool, Dave. You're a pretty fucking cool guy figuring this out. And the people I know know that. But the people that are out in the community and in the in the video realm watching these videos thinks this guy's an asshole. And yes, I'm an asshole, but I'm not an asshole in that kind of way. I'm a good guy. I have to be an asshole here to get my information across to people who just, they won't let go of what they think it is. I'm here to dispel anything that you think it is and let you know that there is one person, okay? One person and he's challenging Shiloh over the treasure chest being taken faultly, fraudulently. So I am the guy, I'm the only person who can who can make that challenge. And that's why I'm trying to make that challenge. And people don't like me because I called them out. Now, where do I stand? I've tried for over a year to get my information out and give it to people and let them understand. But it gets shut down by guys like Robert McQuaid and Kim G. Those are the two that just won't go away from Shiloh's little crew of Wolfpack. And I have emails, I have screenshots of hundreds and hundreds of harassing um, comments by them. Harassing people who are, agree with the solve. They're, they are paid, they're hired by Shiloh to shut down the actual true solve from coming out. And I'm not going to let it happen. So that's why I'm here to sit and explain exactly the story of how it how it all came about and as i said some of the things in in what they did i have to guess on it but a timeline a lot of people will know who did what when they actually put the timeline together for this whole story and the actual true solve folks the kent and esther the dancing with the stars force fen on his old stories in all three books are about multiple stars, about him wanting to be a, a movie star like Errol Flynn, about him talking about the world being a stage. It pulls in Elvis Presley, the song, All the World's a Stage, um, Each of Us Play a Part. He has so many stories that, that bring in all the different stars, and he wasn't one. He would mingle with them. He never felt like he was he was that big popular guy. He danced with all of these stars, and not literally. It was like a, like you dance around a subject. He danced with these stars in all three books. Everybody, he brings in artists, like musical artists, TV shows, movies, movie stars, presidents. He has hundreds of stars and famous people throughout his books. And your, the actual solve is trying to figure out the two stars that are hidden in the clues amongst all of the stars that are in the books. Okay, that's 
that's what this whole solve was. The two stars are Clark Kent and Aunt Esther. And I will prove that in court with all of the validation points I have. If you watch my videos, you will see there are so many connections that pull in those two stars for the actual two people keeping Forrest Fenn's secret. This whole thing, there's not a lot of people that are, and, and I, I, don't, I don't say this to criticize anyone. There are so many, so many hints and clues that pull this together of 15, 15 years of creating this. And Forrest Fenn was brilliant doing it. And it, this is so creative and there's so many funny things and there's so many, how he pulled a lot of these things in here. My organization, when I go to court, just to tell my story of how this, this whole poem and how the treasure hunt ending worked together. I'm going, I'm going to have my main sequence of Kent and Esther with the cross. All of the clues are bringing the cross and the Kent and Esther and the canasta. And where they all fit, where they come out of the books, how they get put together. That's going to be one whole page. Another whole page is going to be about Palisade Cell. How many times he, he insinuates it with the main word being intrusion in the first book. If you look it up, it pulls up intrusive igneous rock. That's what Palisade Sill is. That's where the separation line is in Cimarron Canyon. And not bringing up cinnamon when he talks about 16 different spices in his mother's cabinet. He didn't bring up a specific one. The most common one, cinnamon for Cimarron. You know, another thing I'm going to bring to court, I, I haven't really said anything here, but everybody wonders about the, the brown stains on Forrest Fenn's britches when he slid down the big iron slide, right? In school, second floor, window. Window is your connection to Palisade Sill, window sill. And it's a memoir is a window into a life. That's your clue, window. When you get the window connections, that's going to be another whole page. She stared out the window as if she was waiting, she was waiting for the postman. That's your devil's mailbox right from Palisade Sill parking area. There's so many clues that bring this in and it all validates pulls together, and it pinpoints Palisade Sill. So when you get to that point where Palisade Sill is the actual resting spot, you realize it's beautiful. So anyways, to get to that other point. Okay, the brown stains that Forrest got from sliding down the iron slide in the back, out the window from the second floor. Okay, that, the first thing that led me to Palisade Sill or Cimarron, actually, not even Palisade. I, it's the first thing that brought me to Cimarron Canyon. I looked up the word brown in Spanish, okay? And I came up with Marin, and I, I started to look around, and I saw Cimarron. Marin's in there, Cimarron. So I took that as, wow, that's pretty cool. I found this already. Within three hours of my very first exploring on the internet. So Cimarron, that's where I started looking. Now, when I go back and look at this story about Forrest Fan in Spanish class, right? Spanish class. And then he gets his britches a dark brown. Okay? I have more in this story that I'll bring in, but I'll just let you know the connection in that story is his pants becoming brown in Spanish class. Marron, Cimarron. That's where that connection is. The brown that's in that, in the brown that's in Spanish class. You get it? That's Cimarron. Canyon to search. That is the connection in that story. There's so many other things for that I'm, I'm going to bring into court. I, I need to... I need to prove this to the judge. Okay, that's who I'm here to impress when I go in. So I need to have my shit together. But there is 15 years of all of this stuff that Forrest Fenn put together. So I'm hoping I have more than a half an hour to state my case. Because I need to explain 
how the clues fit and how they connect and what clues I pulled out of the books and what clues are the quotes that Forrest said. So there's a lot I need to explain and I need to get out there for the total understanding of the actual solve. But if you watch my videos, folks, you will see there is, there is the actual true solve in Cimarron Canyon at Palisade Sill. So now where do we go from, from Jack not being the actual solver? Okay. Force Fen did not acknowledge him, but Shiloh did. So now Shiloh has some explaining to do, right? If the guy who really solved the, the Force Fen treasure hunt, which is me, has come forward and called him out and said, this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. I have the actual true solve that is hundreds of clues pulling Kent and Esther dancing with the stars. This, this is so, such a creative solve that Force Fent built here in this, this, it's amazing. And the, the clues that line up with everything, there's so much in my war for me that he said that's the most important story. If you were going to read any story, read My War for Me, because that has the homely girl cross. That would be the easiest one to figure out. Uh, actually, looking for Lewis and Clark, looking for Lois and Clark is pretty, pretty cool too, because Clark Kent, you're actually looking for Clark Kent, and Kent is on this cross. So it could have gone either way. But he, as far as a lot of the information where he talks about melding the names together is in My War for Me that it's so, so fucking genius. And I, I folks, I'm not going to let Forrest Friends 15 years get flushed down the toilet. We can't, I can't do that. I spent too much time and too much, I put my heart and soul into, into this solve, into finding the treasure chest and finding it and then having it Everything that Forrest did, destroyed. Because they're trying to hide something that was wrongfully done. Something that was, ended up being fraud because of how they worked it out. Shiloh, you think that that email that you sent me, or Zoe sent me, that says, Dave, the treasure has been found in Wyoming, has nothing to do with you. If you think that is proof from Forrest Fenn, a man who is on his deathbed, sending me one little email to ease my little fucking mind, you're, you're pushing that you think that that is your, your proof that Forrest Fenn sent that. Because if all the emails are deleted, you just took away your chance of validating that Forrest Fenn sent that email out to 30 people, to 600 people. If it's all gone and you can't go back and timestamp that, I mean, maybe you'll know how. You know how to, you know how to get in my email and, and delete all my comments on YouTube that your little hound dogs say, uh, I keep deleting comments. I don't delete anything because I leave them up for people to see how disgusting these two that are still left, Robert McQuaid, James McQuaid finally backed out. I think he doesn't want to go to court when we get taken to court because of our situation, because you fraudulently stole the treasure chest. It's, it's so fucking deluded and convoluted and fucked up. And I'm just trying to tell the truth here, folks. So I look like the bad guy. I'm going to be the bad guy until you realize I'm just the fucking nice guy that got fucked over. And I'm trying to put my story out and keep getting squashed. And it's, it's just, it's pathetic. Some of the people that are on, in the, in the Fen community, they just don't want the solve out there. They do not want everybody to know the real answer. They, I, I saw Bill Gorman, you had 17 watchers, Bill, but you'll sit there and bust my balls and something Robert McQuaid is saying while I'm trying to make this video, Robert McQuaid trying to be a nice guy all of a sudden. He's saying, oh, you need to go to Bill's channel and watch it in 23 minutes in. Whatever he talks about you. I don't give a shit about Bill. Bill Bill has made himself an idol to 
uh, as a wacky weirdo, uh, pretty much. I mean, he just, you, you've got these, these pictures in rocks. Yeah, there, there's pictures in rocks. You see different things. But what's it have to do with Force Fens Solve? Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. And I don't care about Bill doing his thing over there. But he comes to my channel and he says shit. Just like every other vlogger. That, uh, there's a lot of them that don't now because they know that something's fucked up and something's stirred up in the community. And I'm the one who stirred it up, Shiloh. And I'm calling you out again. And, and this is going to happen. This is going to end up happening because the evidence I have as the true solver will shine through in people's minds when they, when they take the time and look at it. I believe, I believe in people. I, I'm, I still have that. I, I'm a handshake kind of guy. I wanted to discuss this with you way back in my early videos. I asked the family. I There were so many things that I came forward. And, and you know what? I get I get off subject, but that, that email that somebody sent to me from Forrest Fenn's computer or email account that said it wasn't, it had nothing to do with me. That was your chance, Shiloh. That was your chance to make things right. Right there. You had a chance to, on that email, go, Dave, things got fucked up. Let's sit down and talk about it. Okay? Because I didn't know. I didn't know you didn't dig up the treasure chest. So I went and double checked on it and I dug it up. But I decided to keep it. That's the fucking problem. You should have called or you should have emailed and said, hey, Dave. Why didn't you get the treasure chest? You have the solve, Dave. Why didn't you get the treasure chest? That should have been the email. I have the chest here. Let's square this away. I'm a millionaire already. I could give a shit. But no, Shiloh, you had to fucking steal it. You know, I get upset because it's just not admitted. When you finally get fucking called out and you did it. And I have the proof where the actual solve is. And I have the emails and so much information, timeline, that works out. That's beautiful. That, that lets me know. Between the other vloggers, between whoever you've gag-ordered, I don't know. I don't believe that Dale Neitzel is gag-ordered. He's putting out stuff that contradicts what you've said. Cynthia Meacham just goes along with whatever you want her to do. So I don't trust anything out of Cynthia Meacham's mouth. We're all on this vlogging community. So I can say their names and I can put my opinion whether I don't trust them, whether I think they're gag ordered or whatever. I'm giving respect to the other vlogger who Forrest Fan gave that information to because those are in my older videos. Somebody wants to go back and look, look at them. You'll, they're, they're informational. But as far as the actual true solve, I have that, Shiloh. You cannot take that and put that anywhere else. Not 15 years of Forrest Fenn's work. And I can, I will prove it. I No doubt in my mind with this new book I just found. It has it has Aunt Esther. Uh, it talks about the nickels that they put under the old lady's grave. That's Aunt Esther. This, this is a different book. But for a set, if I could find that old lady, that, that old gray-haired lady, I would put it, I would go in some dark night and put a nickel under her grave marker. What does that tell you? It tells you that you're supposed to go in at night to dig up the cross where the Kent and Esther, Aunt Esther were. This force fan, I I do, I give him credit. And nobody else has given him credit. I'm sorry, but all the folks out there that, that say. Forrest Fenn was so great. You're not proving it. You're discrediting him, taking away the real solve from the guy who's coming forward with the real solve. It's 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 so deceiving of how the Forrest Fenn community would not back the guy that's trying to give the information that all of you have asked for. It just it gets frustrating because you don't want to believe me. Because you don't like me. Because um, you don't agree with everything I say. 
I have some bloggers that, Dave, you have absolutely zero clues. It's amazing. You have zero clues. I'm like, there's something wrong with your brain if you don't see 250 clues that I put in my videos, estimating, of all these different connections that are like amazing and beautiful and, and creative and funny, and you don't even see one. You are discrediting your level of intelligence. I'm telling you that right now. You're just, you're, you're, if you, if the same bloggers or bloggers say that same crap, you are just putting yourself out there as moron level. At this point, you really, um, why must I go? It was not in Wyoming. Stuck in Chaselandia. You are another one. If it's not in Wyoming, it's not, you're wrong. You are wrong, buddy. You're wrong. It was not in Wyoming because it was fraud. Forrest Ben had to protect his grandson and the Forrest Ben name. But he still gave credit to the guy who solved it. So the guy from the East, I tell you right now, I'm the guy from the East. I'm going to end that part right there. I don't need to go any further because there's only why must I go that is saying that he's the guy from the East at some campsite. Uh, I guess Forrest Ben wanted to be buried or wanted to the cross, wanted to hide the treasure behind a campground somewhere in Wyoming. I don't understand. And he can't figure out why they're lying. He knows they're lying. Why must I go? You know they're fucking lying. But you still think it's Wyoming. Are they lying about Wyoming or just the spot? Why the hell would they lie about the spot? If it's your spot, yay. They could say that. Maybe they should say it's your spot. So that you they have some kind of some kind of solve out there. But why must I go? You have to understand. Let it go. It's not in Wyoming. It was never in Wyoming. And stuck in Chaselandia, same thing. It was not in Wyoming. And if you understand that the guy that solved the poem is coming forward and he's calling Shiloh out, nobody else is calling Shiloh out. I want to see you vloggers that say you have the solve. Why? Why did they lie? I can tell you why they lied because I have all the information and I have the timeline of when the blaze was found and everything else in between of when I sent Forrest the picture of when his, his remembrance letter came out. This all, this all works out perfectly. To falling into place where they started the cover up. They started the cover up. They had to. Shiloh had to in, in December when he sent, when Forrest Fenn sent the email to Dale Neitzel. Hey, I'm thinking of ending the treasure hunt. That's when the whole thing started to, that Shiloh goes, hey, if I just send him a picture, he'll be at ease. But he fucked up by sending the picture, Forrest Fenn announcing me, and then. Everything got convoluted and screwed up since. So, that's my story. That is how the treasure chest location was found. Everything else is up for speculation, right? I'm just, I'm just stating from what I've seen people do and what people have done. And I've sat back and watched. And when I realized... That the fraud was going on by announcing Jack in Wyoming. I knew something was fucked up. You could have got away with it, Shiloh, if you still said Cimarron Canyon and Palisade Cell. But you would have had to answer on why I had to solve before you went there. So you couldn't, you couldn't do it. You were trapped. You had to pick somewhere else. So if there is, if there are some hidden documents in Forrest Fenn's will that's not able to be seen unless you actually know the final resting place or the actual true solve, this is going to bring it out, okay? This solve that I put out and I'm going to court with and I'm going to tell the judge the way that it needs to be told, the way to understand exactly how all the clues fall into place to fit Palisade cell. And there are many, many, many clues so if you watch the videos, I'll show you the map. I'll show you the actual nine clues. I will show you where the cross was and how the map works out to bring you back to where the cross was. This is this is so genius by Forrest Fenn. 
And I could say it a hundred times to the Fen community. There's only one person that solved it. But you know that after this video comes out, tomorrow, you're going to see the comments. Dave, it was in Wyoming. I'm the guy who solved it. Dave, you're wrong. Dave, stop picking on Shiloh. You know, it's it's amazing. It's like... It's like... You know those big fish that swim through the water? And you have those little fish sucking on them? And they, they, they eat all the dead whatever off the fish? That's what I feel like these guys are. They, they don't want to let go. Of, oh my God, I have a chance. I'm going to lose my channel. They, they just, they can't take it. And they just, they, and I feel bad. I, I, I've reached out to them, but they just keep nagging. And, and it's frustrating. Folks, as far as Superman, some of the stories, Bessie, if you look up definition of Bessie, it's a it's a cool woman who can pack a punch like Superman. Okay? Aunt Esther is in within the stories. I've asked people in the Fen community to look up information. And I keep finding more every day of how Kent and Esther fit in these stories. And I find the Dancing with the Stars in the first book and the Asterix that all of us are characters and that's what you have to look up in the stories all of the characters and you have to find the two main characters and aberrations on out on the edge or that live out on the edge this is great because the book that i found it connects with aberrations living out on the edge and people say oh if you, and i had somebody ask me and i'm i'm gonna let you know right now about crossing lines to meet at a certain point the crossing of the lines that he is talking about is aberrations in the visual uh, in the visual example or definition of aberration. It's where you have multiple lines coming in and then they, they crisscross and zero at a certain point to be able to focus in on that. That's your crisscrossing of the lines as an aberration as you're looking at the cross. Those two names have to come together. That's how... The, there are so many clues and hints that I've figured out. I'm I'm proud of myself. Okay? You guys, it, the Fen community, they won't be proud of me. They're upset because of the situation that Shiloh put us in. This shouldn't be at this the stage it is, where there's the arguing, where there's the bickering, where there's the confrontations back and forth. It shouldn't be that. This the whole Fen community should be a Fen unity. You should all be joined together instead of fighting each other. And you fight me. And I'm the guy that's that's trying to help every single one of you. And maybe you don't see it. I don't know. But maybe the real people that watch these videos that have no connection with the videos or with the solve or with the, the search... They're going to see the actual true solve before you folks do that are in the Fen community, which is totally sad. It is a, it's, it's crazy how the Fen community will just not accept the actual true solve. How can you, and the people that really, 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 really want to know, I, I swear to God, if you look at the videos and watch, Take a 10 minute video. I've got a lot of short videos that has, it has something that I found that I thought was creative and, and Force Fan put together. And the more you keep watching, the more you'll understand and you'll, you'll want to keep watching and say, holy shit, this, this solve is fucking amazing. And people are just shitting on it. So hopefully after you know the actual story behind all the clues that I've found and given, you, you might say, hey, you know, there's some credibility here of the actual solver getting fucked over. And maybe Shiloh's lying. So, us going to court, I don't know if Shiloh's going to be there. He doesn't show up for the Forrest Fen gatherings. Um, and neither does Jack. But I, those names are on the court document. Maybe they will show up when I go to tell my story of what the actual solve is. But you better have one hell of a fucking solve. Shiloh, 
that I can't see you coming up. If you really come up with with this Alona, Miami, or Wyoming, or something, I don't know how you're going to pull as many things that are going to look like 15 years of work from a, a honest, hardworking man that you pretty much disgraced his legacy. So I don't know what you're going to do. I've asked, I've asked many times to just let's talk it over. But I can tell you right now, I heard, okay, I can't validate it. I've heard Forrest Fenn told Jack to do the right thing. Apparently, Jack didn't do the right thing, did he? What is the right thing, Shiloh? What was Jack supposed to do as the right thing? People think, oh, give it to a museum, the chest? No, the right thing was come forward. Now, Jack, Jack, you're on that. I told you from the beginning, Jack. You will be included. You have chances to, to get your ass out of the situation you put yourself in. But you decided not to. You're like, nope, I'm good. You can keep fucking trying to discredit us. Shiloh keeps protecting me. Shiloh's telling me I got nothing to worry about. I'm good. Shiloh knows it all. Two thumbs up, right? Jack, you're in it. And it's it's... Coming down to Judgment Day, when this solve is is actually because what I have to do, what I have to do is is burden of proof, right? Or just put that little bit, that little bit of doubt, right? Reasonable doubt. I need that reasonable doubt that you're really the solver, Jack, because you're. You're the guy that showed up with the chest, so you must have a solve, or somebody behind you has a solve, and it's Shiloh, right? Shiloh has the real solve, but he's trying to make it in Wyoming. So, Jack, you're fucked. You're fucked either way. And I've asked you, this is, you might have one fucking chance of semblance of, of grace or something to save your own fucking credibility and ass by coming forward and going, I don't want this anymore. Fucking Shiloh lied to me. And I, I I got caught up. I had to do it. I just I I needed the money because I didn't have a job with journalism, and this seemed like a beautiful opportunity. I was told it was a hundred percent safe. Jack, you're the guy. You're the guy that can still get out of it clean. Robert McQuaid trying to fucking harass me and my and my watchers. You're you're gonna I'm I'll call you in. I don't care. And Kim G can come with you. I know that you two right now are conspiring about more shit. And Kim G, you can't say shit that I sent. I sent triple X things to kids. That's that's fucking slander. I tell you right now, I know where the fraud came from. So I'm calling it out. And I haven't slandered yet. If I have, take me to court so I can show my proof. And I've asked them that and they won't do it. So they, you may see a lawsuit finally. And they're just going to try the last ditch effort instead of fucking coming clean. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But I, I, I'm i telling you right now, Forrest Fenn would tell you the same thing. Do the right thing. What is the right thing? I wanted to talk to the community about it, but nobody wanted to talk to me. I, I don't. To me, like I said, I'm a handshake kind of guy. I, I go on the honesty thing. I, I, I trust people. Um, whatever you guys decide to do, no matter what it is, no matter how you decide, the true solve is going to come out in court within the next couple of months. So you better play your cards the right way. Hi folks, I'm back. I need to wrap up this video. It's gone on kind of longer than I was expecting, but I, uh, I took a couple days to go through what I already had. Some of the film got missed, uh, deleted by accident. So I just wanted to see what I missed. I, I went through the whole thing and left in what I felt like I needed. But to wrap this up, I want to thank Robert McQuaid for giving me the idea to, uh, to say that. Thank you. Um, it's not meant to be disrespectful. It's actually the truth. Um, I am, I, I am apologetic that this whole situation happened. I'm not the bad guy here, folks. I, I want you to understand that. 
I'm the guy that solved the actual poem, and I am the guy that got screwed over, along with the rest of you. So once we all join together and you realize this is the actual solve, and I'm going to give you a little bit of tidbits right before I leave at the end here. I, I guess, like I said, I get excited over the whole the whole thing that Forrest Fenn built here and what he created. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that, of what I'm taking with me. And you know what? If the court case, I saw Barbara said something about, uh, it's too late or whatever. I, I don't, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know all that crap. I just want to, I want to speak my mind in a court of law, telling them exactly what the solve is and was and how it works. So that's my intent is all truth. Everything I've said, everything I've given you all true. So as far as, um, Proof to give the court. Uh, I know Forrest Fenn's emails were deleted. They went somewhere with Hillary's. So the Fenn's can't, I mean, they're pro they may come back up with it. They, they may, you know what, it might reappear, whatever. But whatever happens, as far as actual evidence of what the actual physical solve is, that right there, I'm going to give you a little sample. But Shy Guy is working on uh, this thing, AGK, uh, with Cypress and a few other things. You know, he's gonna, he's on the right track. As far as these older vloggers that used to be on YouTube giving the information, Forrest Fan used to give AGK information to put out as fact. And we took it as fact when it came from Forrest Fan. AGK was the one that would communicate with Forrest and give us the information. And we all believed it, right? It's all true. Forrest Fenn didn't lie to us. So now it's changed over to where Shiloh gives the information to K-Pro and Cal Lozares. Okay? The guy who never got his boots on the ground. Um, and K-Pro, I don't know. Some of the things she posts, I, I think that she wants answers. But you, everybody wonders how they're involved. Or if they're involved, okay? AGK with Cyprus. There's older vloggers that are gone now. Now, are they gag-ordered? Are they just sick of the whole thing? Did they get paid off to, like, walk away? This is all something that Shy Guy is probably going to figure out. Once he knows, once he realizes, when he follows this, Saul, and the timeline of everything that happened, then he will start getting on the right track. And the same with a few other vloggers, I'm not even going to bring up their names. I I, um, I start to get in a little tips with them. Mario, you're on the right track. Good job, man. You're, you, you're asking questions that I can answer. And one of them I'm going to answer at the end. But as far as um, that Cypress stuff, good job, Shy Guy. Go, go for it. Go at it. Stay with it. Find out the information. But understand that these old vloggers could be part of all of those things you're finding that of the video I watched. And uh, thank you for letting me mention in this video about that. So to get on to my solve and Forrest Fenn's solve that I'm going to give you before I wrap this up. Now, those of you that take some time or have watched some of my uh, The Solve, The Solution, The Superman video that has a ton of information in that video, uh, or the other map um, poem video that I just recently put out. That one has a, a bunch of stuff, too. And the, and the picture I sent that had four blocks in it. And this right here, this was one of them. Right? People have seen this in my videos. They know that I said it was found, the one cross under Canopy of Stars. Okay? The more I go back and look into these books, and I realize... Once you, you yourself, anybody out there, if you know, put everything out of your mind from what you think you know, the thrill of the chase, that's a trench that goes up to the fire pit. That is the end of his rainbow. That is a hidden area that he couldn't reach anymore. And in here, in the stories, he talks about not being able to get back to that point. But at the beginning, this is so critical right here. The front cover. When you read this, 
And he talks about, I got over here. He says, unlock the clues that are scattered among these pages, right? But he also says, the thrill of that chase. So if you look at this front cover and you actually read how it's said about, I might as well friggin' read it. My video's long enough. Anyways, it's going to match some of the other six hour videos that people put on. This memoir, a memoir is a window into life. Remember William Zinzer? This memoir, that's your clue, folks. Window in the books. If you know to look for windows as a connection with Palisade Silk, you will, this will all come clear, okay? You need to know that the chase is the trench that goes up from Palisade Cell parking lot. And the chase itself, that's what the trench is. A memoir is the clue for windows in the book that connect you with all of those sprinkled clues. It's so beautiful. But this memoir includes a true story about a secret treasure and an outrageous dare. Unlock this dare again for Daredevil that I had in the other one. But unlock the clues that are scattered among these pages. And you can go home with a bronze chest that is full of gold and precious jewelry that is almost too heavy for one person to carry. Forrest said that if he were younger, he'd go back and get it himself. Forrest Fenn, the author, has spent most of his 80 years in similar pursuits of passion and now wants others to share in the thrill of that chase. That's what he's specifically talking about. And I've mentioned that. But people that that just see that one clue don't understand exactly what he's talking about. But the thrill of that chase. It's a specific chase that he's talking about. A specific trench that leads to his secret area. Okay, folks? That's what that's what that thrill of that chase means. So, I mean, even Fort Clark, it's Clark Kent for the in the front. And then he also talks about Fort Sill, which is Palisade Sill. Those are the only two forts that I've heard him talk about in the books. And that's I believe that's the other book, too. But to get back to the actual story that's, like, really important for, for Dancing with the Stars and everything else, is the, or Canopy Under the Stars, is this one. That's where the cross is. That's the one I sent him. So he knew that I found the cross because I sent him the Kent and Esther cross with that picture. Okay? But if you... And somebody else mentioned it, and and kudos to you. I, I I don't want to mention your name, but I I think you know who you are who sent me that information. And I was like, I never thought of that, and and I didn't realize it. But when you flip the page, because this is all super critical for retrieving the chest, right here. That's all your answers about retrieving the chest. Because of where it is, heading north down to the cemetery, beautiful. And this is your clues right here for the actual windows about Palisade Sill, that whole first section in Gypsy Magic. But Gypsy Magic, if you look at this picture, right? This is, thank you, uh, thank you, you know who you are. These are gypsies dancing under a canopy of stars, right? Gypsies, they're dancing with the stars, right? That connection right there was like, Wow, that's great. That's what's at the end of the book. But there's also one more thing at the end of the book, which is really, I've looked at the picture a thousand times. Never really came up with it. But now that I know, I mean, you have Dancing with the Stars in that picture with the gypsies. You have the cross, the one little cross in the graveyard. And it's not really a graveyard there, folks. It's just the cross, the connection with it. But, the end of the book, that so many people look at this, right? I've never brought this into any of my stories, but looking back and knowing exactly what the actual solve is from that little eagle sitting up on the moon in his nest, at Eagle's Nest, you go 8.3 miles, more than the 8.25, and you end up at Palisade. Do you know what a Palisade is? I'm going to show you the definition of a Palisade. It's a bunch of wooden tr wooden stumps. So under that canopy of stars is a palisade right there 
with the eagle's nest. It's beautiful. And this is... I find so many more. There's so many more. And if you folks want to grab the book, the first book, The Thrill of the Chase, and look through it knowing actually that he's talking about different characters. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Anyways, that's that's amazing, right? That's all the canopy of stars. You have your palisade with the... the and he's not going to put a wall of tree stumps. He's putting them all over the place. He's in the middle of a bunch of tree stumps, which is a palisade, which is a wall of trees, a wall of tree stumps, a wall of wooden structure. This, that's beautiful. That is, I don't even know why I didn't get it earlier, but I'm, I tell you, I look back and I go, wow, that's awesome. But one of you, one of you folks could have found that looking at it and, and sent me a message. Hey Dave, you know, this really works out that way. So I'm going to prove, I absolutely 100% am going to prove that this is for Sven Saul he created. And I stop fucking up with my words. This is going to be one of the, this is the biggest thing that is going to show that this is for Sven's creation of his actual Saul. Okay, so you got the canopy of stars, a palisade under it. Canopy of stars with the little cross under it. And a canopy of stars with them, the gypsies dancing under it. You have your dancing with the stars. You have your palisade and you have your cross, which is the most important thing to him from Vietnam. And, you know, I looked in, if you read my war for me with all the different characters that he talks about throughout the books, you, you really start to realize what he's saying in that whole story. That is, I have so many things marked in my war for me of how he brings in and incorporates those, uh, those thoughts of different actors and, and all the different things, you can really see it in how he, how he says everything in My War for Me. But what I wanted to say was, I just watched a video with, with uh, Treasure Seekers. He's back. Welcome back, Treasure Seekers. Um, and you had Bill Gorman on. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Crazy, right? And all of you guys in Street, High Street, you're all talking about, hey, look at this picture. Of the school, right? The Lanier School, whatever it is. Um, I took a picture of it, so I'm going to have it up. Where Forrest went, where Forrest Fenn went to school. And you're like, oh, look at there's a fish in the bell. There's, uh, you're trying to pull these clues out. And I'm going to tell you what the clues are in that, okay? Because I look back when you guys were talking about it. Nobody wants to discuss what it actually is to find out from me. Because I have the answers. So, if you take the names that are along the bottom, you know Forrest Fenn, you know Skippy, um, and all the people that are there, if you look up Kassir, it's all chaos. Kassir is chaos. That's what the whole thing is. You have to put it together. Eddard. Eddard is the other name right next to Forrest Fenn. Anybody ever look up what Eddard means? Well, I did. And you know what it is? It's a character in Isaac Asimov's story. At our description of what that name is, is a character in Isaac Asimov's, one of his stories. Characters. That's what he brings in and what he wants everybody to realize what you have to do in these stories. It's so connected. But... a. There's going to be more people. I th I think, I thought there was going to be maybe 25% that would actually see it. But when you understand what you're looking for and you read that book again, you will see. You will see all the things that he talks about and how he brings it in. And, and it, it is. Forrest Fan was a genius when he did this. And and I I say it every time. I find more and I find more. And I know that other people are going to see something that I miss. Like that that palisade under the canopy of stars at the end of the book, the epilogue. Read the epilogue. Just read that part of the story on, on how he talks about people coming in and out of your life. It was That's the whole premise of this whole song, this dancing with the stars. He danced with those stars his whole life. And he was never a full-fledged star. He, 
He never made it to that status, even though every one of the stars, so many of them were his friend. And he'd hang out with them, and he'd do things with them, and he'd meet them, and he'd buy things from the artists. And that's what this whole thing is. And it's going to be proven by me whether or not I get to court because Barbara's saying that it's it's uh, it's too late for me or something like that. Whatever. It's not too late. All I have to do, I'm not suing for the treasure chest. And, and some people out there think that I am. I'm not. I want the family and Jack to do the right thing. Whatever that is. I understand and I have a thought of maybe what the right thing would be. Since I got so fucked over. As I said at the beginning of this, this video, I solved it. I have the actual true solve. All rights reserved. It's my solve to decide what I want to do, who I want to talk to, if I want to do a book, if I want to do a movie, if I want to do a miniseries, whatever. I'm not upset with Netflix. Not at all. I, I refuse Netflix because they were looking for people who were just regular searchers. I wasn't a regular searcher. I was a guy who solved it. There's a difference. I'm not going to jump into some video. And why would Netflix do a video about just the searches? Do a video about Jack. Jack supposedly found the treasure chest, right? Or is it just going to be somebody walking through the woods? I mean, I, I, I worked with a buddy who goes, I took my gun for a walk in the woods the other day. Meaning he went hunting. But they didn't get anything, right? That's kind of what Jack was. is just saying. He walked through the woods. For 25 days and found the treasure chest with no soul, which was not going to happen. Force Ben told us that. So, Jack, time is running out, buddy. You, you're going down with them. I'm telling you, I warned you, you still have some little bit of time before people start going, Jesus, Jack, you, you are going to get screwed. Um, you, fraud, you're in with fraud right now, you uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. You're, you're not going to listen to me. It's okay. Shiloh's going to protect you in jail. Maybe you guys will be end up at the same place. I don't know. I've only put my information out, and I'm going to give a ton more information, that, especially what I'm finding, knowing more and more and more, and and how it all connects. Because now that I know about Superman, now that I know about Aunt Esther, and especially the book. That, that other book that I found that I called The uh, Smoking Gun and talking about Aunt Esther. And uh, when I bring that story out, that's like, wow, that's, that's incredible how much it matches with the old lady that cooked the pies with gray hair. And if he could find her grave, he would put a nickel under. This story that's in that book, it's just one of the many. It talks about a belt buckle. It talks about... Vietnam. It talks about um, Aunt Esther. It talks about the um, the plane that lands on water. It talks about an experimental plane, the helicopter thing that that Skippy built. This every story that it's there, folks. It is there. I've got the proof. I am going to show it eventually. I'm going to put it all together. I still, like I said, I finally got through book number one. Of all the clues that that pull this thing together. And I solved it just by the poem. I, I was sitting in that parking lot in front of the sign. In front of Kent and Esther. And then realized, wow, this is it. Ken Esther. Ken Esther. I got it. But I shouldn't have got fucking stolen. So anyways, I'm already at 20 minutes. I didn't want to get that far into the end of this other video. Because it's going to be a long one when I download it. Because I don't have the equipment like some of these other guys that are looking for, hey, do a quick payment and uh, and I'll and I'll talk to you. <laughs> I don't do that. I said I wouldn't do that from the beginning. That's not why I'm here. I'm not here to make money on YouTube. I'm here to give out the actual true solve for you folks. And I'm doing that. And I'm going to finish it. So, to all the people who who believed in me, the three people... The 10 people, the 100 people who just keep quiet. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Thank you for waiting until this, this finally comes through. But it will come through. And there will be heads that will roll. And Shy Guy is the one who's going to catch, catch all of the guys 
in the vloggers who were connected to Shiloh and gotten paid off somehow or a gag order. And if you got gag order, just let me know. I'll subpoena you to court so you can tell what really happened. But we know, we all know that Jack is not really the guy that solved it. And we all know that Shiloh knows who did. And a lot of the people in the vlogging community think that Shiloh is hiding a secret guy behind him that he's protecting. He's not. He's hiding a secret guy behind him to protect himself. He's not going to admit he still hasn't. I, I wait for them to come forward and, be, and do the right thing. Do the honorable thing. Do the honest thing. Do what Forrest Fenn would want you to do. That's what we need to do here, okay? Think about, think about all of the 15 years that Forrest Fenn spent on this. This beautiful, beautiful fucking creation that's, that's gotten so smeared with shit from people treating other people like shit. I'm not trying to treat the family like shit here, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have the voice for Forrest Fenn. If you read that book again and you read what's in, in Forrest Fenn's heart, that, that right there, you, you know his honesty and what he wanted to do. And then at the end, getting railroaded to have to say Wyoming. This is all going to come out, folks. And, and why must I go? If you made it this far in the video, then you, maybe you'll start understanding. There is somebody who solved this poem. And it's not you, buddy. And Josh, who's behind it? Who, Amber, Kyle, Trent, whoever the hell they are. I don't even know. I think they're your friends that you somehow got your mind that they they screwed over Jack or and Shiloh's going to be your buddy after you rat those guys out. I don't know where you're headed with that, man. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of vloggers that are in the wrong directions. If we all start getting on the same page, we will figure this out without the help of Shiloh coming clean. Okay, but... Everybody fighting and you guys fighting me. I never hear my name brought up. You, I don't know if the vloggers are afraid that they're going to lose their their channel. Like, hey, this is my this is my bread and butter now. I have a channel and I have followers. You'll still have your followers, but you you need to start talking about what the real solve is. You you guys, the vloggers that are just talking about like. Treasure Seekers, you just came back and you're talking about this school picture that, that you guys don't know what you're looking at in the picture. It's just the names. Everything else doesn't matter. It's Anyways, thank you again for my followers, my true followers. And if I get any new followers, that's great. You're going to see this um, come out to fruition eventually. You will see it come out to fruition that I am the actual true solver. And whatever's happening with Capro and Kalazars and Shiloh and all this stuff that's, that's, there's a stir up and something's being, like, Barbara, you, Barbara, I, I watch some of your videos. I do. And I, I, again, my heart goes out to you. You have, you are pretty much the closest one from what I saw to having some kind of semblance of, of right solve, but it's not about music and songs. It's about stars, all kinds of stars, presidents, Elvis, everything. Look at it again, but look at it open-mindedly this time. I know you spent a lot of money and you spent a lot of hard-earned time doing what you did, and you felt like you had it and someone stole it from you. They did not steal it from you. You did not have it, Barbara. That's the thing. There's a difference. And if I lost this cracking case, I don't care. There's going to be somebody out there that's going to want an exclusive with the actual true solver. And when they realize who the guy is, they'll be calling me. So, Barbara, just... If you're going to pursue and you're going to keep doing what you're going to do, I, I know that a lot of people upset you. And, and a lot of people will probably be so thrilled that... You are actually not the solver, and you really think that you are, and, and that's that's a sad thing. But you, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to go, all right, I didn't solve it. I was, like, really close. But don't come after me. 
because I solved it. Okay, that's where we're going to run into an issue. Because you have your solve that you don't want to put out. You put out hints for people to try to figure out a solve that's not there. That's why nobody follows you. It's There's so many vloggers that I want to be friends with. And I would sit down with and have a beer and, and discuss everything and shake their hands. Everybody out there has been misled on where the actual treasure chest was found. So I understand. You seeing me do what I do here and you go, what the fuck is this guy? Is this guy fucking crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I'm the guy who fucking solved it. And that's why I do what I do and what I say and, and I confront. And you know what? They're afraid of me, and they know that it's going to come out, especially if I get into court. Now, all the things I know, I do. I do. I need to wrap this up. Uh, I try to give out in my information in my videos. So, please follow. Please give me a thumbs up. I hope you made it through this. I should have told you to grab some popcorn or uh, potato chips before you started so you have a snack along the way through, but it was a long-ass video. But I had things I needed to say. I had some proof I wanted to show you that I'm going to be taking to court. And if you understand where the actual solve is at Palisade Cell, when you look in the books, and in the third book he brings up, I, I'm not going to get into it. I've got all this, I've got so many things to give you for information. It's It would be, it's 15 years I'm trying to condense. All right. So folks, I am Dave Woodard. I am the man from the East that Forrest Fenn was talking about. I am that guy. I'm the fucking guy that solved this thing. And I will prove it. And I hope that some of the, the vloggers that I've upset, don't be upset. It, we had disagreements. Let's get along now. Let's discuss it. Let's Information that you have and you've learned can help with the actual solvers now that it's out. Now that you know. And you know what? A good time to do it is before I go end up going into court. Because the information that you have, if you go, you know, this guy's really right. And then you look at your information that you've worked your ass off on. And you say, you know what? This really helps that. Instead of going, I got nine lines out of the poem and I know I'm right. But again, some of the vloggers, I, I really hope we can all get along. And I hope nobody, Barbara, I, ho I really hope that you don't get criticized. Like, I got a feeling you will be. be only because of your your confidence. And I know, I, I'm, people call me a narcissist because I, I know, or I think I know. No, I know. I'm the, I'm the guy. I'm that guy that Forrest Fenn was talking about. I'm that guy that he was waiting for that email from, that I waited until... The chest came forward. I'm like, what the fuck is it? There, there should be no reason this chest is found. But it was. So that's what we need to concentrate on next. Who's behind Jack coming forward? And it's not Kent. Uh, it's not Trent, Amber, and and Jamoko. Whoever the... It's, I don't know who the... What the fuck? It, whew. Anyways, let's get this straight. Right, folks? And uh, to the Forest Fan family, I hope you do the right thing. All right. Dave Woodard, the man from the East. Thank you, folks, for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>